On today's episode, we've got Starlink available on a boat. Tesla creates the world's largest decentralized battery, the latest Cybertruck production developments, new Tesla semi sightings, and leaks of the next generation V4 supercharger. So let's get going. New reports are coming out that Tesla is continuing to make moves in acquiring production equipment to build the Cybertruck in 2023. The latest Cybertruck acquisition comes from a German manufacturing company who are reportedly familiar with Tesla's vehicles and facilities after supplying components and machinery to Giga Berlin and Giga Shanghai. According to German reports, this new production equipment will be specifically for manufacturing drivetrain units. The necessary machines for the Cybertruck are reportedly being built and are expected to be deployed in Gigafactory, Texas around early July 2023. The machinery is reported to be capable of producing about 750,000 drive units per year, which would line up fairly well with Elon's previous estimates of building 250,000 Cybertrucks per year, assuming most Cybertrucks produced will have two motors and the top spec version will have four. This drive unit deal and timeline is very much in step with the latest development from Gigapress manufacturer Idra, who have just assembled the first ever 9,000 ton press at their headquarters in Italy. This machine will be used to cast the rear body section of the Cybertruck that will support the bed, and this unit will still need some time to be torn down, shipped, and reassembled in Texas. SpaceX has announced their latest product now available to consumers, Starlink Maritime. This is a high-powered variation on the Starlink satellite internet terminal that can provide 350 megabits per second of download speed to a boat while out at sea. The applications here go way beyond just allowing rich folks to watch YouTube on their yachts. This technology can be rolled out to merchant vessels, cargo transports, oil rigs. Overall, it's a great opportunity for those who live and work at sea to enjoy the same connectivity that we take for granted here on the land. According to the SpaceX website, Starlink Maritime allows you to connect from the most remote waters across the world, just like you would in the office or at home. In addition to withstanding extreme cold, heat, hail, sleet, heavy rain, and gale force winds, Starlink also holds up against rocket engines. Starlink is currently being used to get high quality video of SpaceX rocket landings at sea, providing continuous coverage in the face of engines capable of generating up to 190,000 pounds of force. You may have noticed that the video quality of Falcon 9 booster landings has made a major upgrade in the last month, and this is thanks to Starlink Maritime. In the past, the video feed from the drone landing ship would get all choppy and cut out just as the rocket booster was touching down, which is obviously the best part of the show. But lately, we get to see the entire process in crisp detail. And that is what this system is capable of. In a Twitter reply, Elon Musk clarified that this is not just a regular Starlink terminal mounted to a boat. Elon says, quote, it's dual high-performance terminals, which are important for maintaining the connection in choppy seas and heavy storms. The cost of Starlink Maritime includes a monthly payment of $5,000 and a one-time hardware cost of ten dollars This includes the two high-performance terminals, and that may sound expensive, but Elon Musk pointed out that SpaceX was paying $150,000 per month for the janky connection that they used on the ships previously. This comes as SpaceX have just deployed a new batch of Starlink satellites into a polar orbital shell. These 53 satellites are the first to be deployed in shell number 3, which will eventually consist of 348 satellites in 6 orbital planes and will operate at an equatorial inclination of 97 degrees. This is a key step for Starlink to become fully functional. Elon wrote on Twitter, these polar launches will enable complete coverage of Earth. Tesla has joined forces with Pacific Gas and Electric in California to invite 25,000 customers in forming the world's largest distributed battery to help support power grid reliability. 
This is part of Tesla's virtual power plant initiative. Basically, the distributed battery is made up of individual privately owned Powerwall home batteries. The homeowners opt in to connecting their Powerwall to the virtual power plant. And then Tesla's software allows for every battery in the virtual plant to function in unison. So the entire network can push energy into the grid simultaneously, acting together as one giant battery. This way, the power walls can act as a support system to prop up the entire local grid in high stress situations. Pacific Gas and Electric noted that it will manage the virtual power plant events for participating customers. As their first deployment, the utility will direct customer batteries to discharge when there is a high demand for electricity between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. from May through October. PG&E customers who have Tesla Powerwalls that are participating will receive two bucks for every incremental kilowatt hour of electricity discharged during an event. Tesla's senior vice president of powertrain and energy engineering, Drew Baglino, wrote in a statement, enabling Powerwall customers to support the grid and their community is a necessary and important part of accelerating the transition to sustainable energy. We seek to partner with utilities and regulators everywhere to unlock the full potential of storage to bring more renewable, resilient, and less costly electricity to everyone. Tesla is also working with utility companies in Texas to support the electrical grid in that state. The Texas grid is not connected to any of the national grid networks, and this makes it vulnerable to the effects of extreme weather and natural disasters, and Tesla can help them fix this. Unfortunately, Tesla Powerwall owners in Texas are not able to send power back to the grid under the current system. Tesla is working to change that, and progress is ongoing. Hopefully, Texas will see the value Tesla is bringing to California and will want in on the action. In another recent sighting of the Tesla Semi on public roads, we are now seeing two of the electric transport trucks rolling down the highway together near Donor Lake, California. In the clip, we can see two white Tesla Semis traveling in a miniature convoy. This might not seem like much, but given the location and the direction that they were traveling, it seems pretty likely that these two were on their way to the PepsiCo Frito-Lay facility in Modesto, California, which we know has become a staging ground for the first rollout of the Tesla Semi. This is the first location outside of a Tesla facility where the high-powered megacharger station has been installed specifically for the Semi. So these two are prime candidates for the first Tesla Semis to be used for a commercial client delivery. Also, given that the two were driving in a line, it's even possible that Tesla is experimenting with the fleet mode concept, which is basically like a stopgap between semi-autonomous vehicles and fully autonomous. The idea would be that a human-driven Tesla semi would lead the way, and then a train of fully autonomous semis would follow along, using the human-controlled vehicle as a guide. This kind of model would help to make up for some of the potential downsides in the max carrying capacity of the Tesla Semi, which could be reduced due to the weight of its own battery pack that it also has to move. The next generation Tesla Supercharger V4 has been in development for some time now, and its final design may actually be ready. Information from sources now shows how it will look and what dimensions the charger will have. The charging speed of electric vehicles is obviously still a source of worry for a lot of consumers. They're afraid that the car won't have enough range and it will take too long to recharge. Tesla already has the capability with their superchargers to rapidly refill the car's battery pack at a pace that is industry leading. But this is still not the limit of the technology. We can go faster. Currently, the V3 superchargers output 250 kilowatts of energy, but the power of 350 kilowatts is not far off, according to Elon Musk, who hinted at this during the Tesla Model S Plaid presentation in 2021. He said that, at the moment, the installation of 250 kilowatt superchargers is actively continuing, but soon, Tesla will begin to increase their capacity to 280, 300, and 350 kilowatts. Now, a Twitter user at MarcoRPTesla 
has been able to get some information on what design and dimensions the new V4 supercharger will have. Although he couldn't show photos of it, but he does claim to have the measurements. By comparing the dimensions with the current V3, he created a schematic drawing of their differences. According to Marco, the V4 superchargers will be taller, thinner, and have a slightly smaller footprint than the current ones. Now, that does sound sketchy for sure. However, Drive Tesla Canada, who have proven to be a very reliable source of information, says that they have obtained a photo of the new V4 charger. The website says that to protect the identity of their source, they cannot publish the photo, but they have published a description of what it looks like. According to Drive Tesla Canada, quote, the V4 superchargers will look almost exactly like the Tesla Semi Mega Chargers we have seen installed at Giga Nevada and the Frito-Lay facility in Modesto. You might be thinking we received a photo of the Mega Charger, but the major difference was not only the connector, but also where the connector docks. We believe this different position is mainly due to the size difference between the two units. Based on what we have been told, the Mega Charger stands a few inches shy of 7 feet tall, meaning the docks are likely similar heights off the ground, but they appear different because the V4 pedestal is not as tall as the Mega Charger." End quote. Word on the street is that the current V3 supercharger will actually be getting a power upgrade this year that pushes the output to 324 kilowatts, according to Sawyer Merritt on Twitter, who is usually pretty reliable, but not perfect. That rollout will happen in Q3 2022. So that stands to reason that Supercharger V4 will be at least 350 kilowatts, but probably capable of much higher output than that. We're likely not going to see these roll out until sometime next year. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.